So this one is called 54321 Blast Off. My name is Kim Maida. I work at an identity and access management company called Auth0, and I'm also an Angular Google developer expert. And so I work in the authentication industry, identity industry, and I saw this tweet earlier this year, and it really sort of resonated with me regarding how people react to authentication a lot of the times. You have this scenario where, are you ready to work on the auth code? New dev says, yes, of course. And then the reality is something like, more like that. <laughs> so how does Angular as a platform help us deal with authentication and the issues that authentication brings to the table? And I'm going to talk about this by setting up a little to-do list. There's three items on the list. So the first thing we want to be able to do is elegantly manage authentication events. And this could be stuff like token availability. It could be login status of the user. We also need to be able to send the token with API requests. And then finally, we want to be able to restrict access to certain routes in our application. So managing authentication events. Fortunately, Angular comes with this awesome library, which you all know and love called RxJS. And the thing that RxJS really brings to the table when it comes to dealing with authentication, especially if you're doing something like dealing with an authorization server, is it allows you to interact with SDKs reactively. So you can do things like binding callbacks. You can convert promises or async await from external libraries and turn those things into observable streams, which makes it really easy for Angular to use it. So for example, Maybe we're using an authentication SDK, and it provides a method that returns token data from the authorization server after you sort of do the login dance. Now, what you can do here is you can use something like bind callback or bind node callback from RxJS to create observables that will emit when the callback completes. So most sort of third-party libraries aren't actually written in Rx. They're not reactive. So in order to use those libraries with something like Angular, stuff like this can be very helpful. Now, if your library returns promises or uses async await instead of callbacks, you can use the from creation method in order to convert those to observables, and then you can subscribe to them. Now, the other thing that we have that RxJS helps with is streams of authentication data. This could be stuff like token availability, user information, login status. So what you could do is something like create a stream for user data, for example. You could use a behavior subject uh, for this. And once you have that sort of behavior subject set up, then when data becomes available or it changes as a result of authentication events, you can tell that stream to emit values. And then you can subscribe to the stream anywhere in your application and do something as a result of uh, that information becoming available. Now, that's only a couple of examples of how RxJS can help us manage these types of events in our application and do interop with other libraries. But I'm sure you can find a lot more ways than just that to leverage RxJS when you're dealing with authentication in your applications. So if we come back to our to-do list, we learned that we can elegantly manage those authentication events with RxJS. And so now we need to be able to send the token with API requests. Traditionally, we will get an access token when a user logs in in a single page web app. And then that token goes with the request to the API. API validates that it's got the right token, and then it will return data if that is true. So in Angular, as of version 4.3, we have HTTP interceptors. And interceptors exist to transform requests or responses. So what, what's going to happen is when we call our API, we're going to intercept any requests using an interceptor service. And then we can attach that authorization header with the token value in it. And then we can send that authorized request on its way to the API. So in order to implement interceptors, we're going to open our app routing module. And then we are going to, in our provider's array, do a few things. So we have to provide the HTTP interceptors token from Angular Common. We're also going to tell it what interceptor class we want to use, and we'll create that next. And then finally, we can set multi to true, because we can potentially define multiple interceptors, and they're just going to be called in the order that they're provided. So you could have specific interceptors to do very specific things, and you don't have to lump all of that code into, into just one interceptor if you have multiple things to do. 
So our interceptor service is going to have something in it that looks like this. So there's some necessary setup, and then there's going to be an intercept function. And in that function, we can go ahead and we can clone that HTTP request that's coming through. It's going to be made available to us by the interceptor. And then we can go ahead and set the headers. We can set the authorization header with the value of the token. And then we can send the cloned request on its way with the new header. Now that's all fine and good, but there are definitely times when you're gonna wanna use asynchronous interceptors. And this could be something that you need if you want an API talk call to fire when the user comes back from logging in and you want this to be an API call that just happens automatically after their login process. So we're gonna need to wait for a token to be available first, right? So we can use RxJS to wait until that data becomes available in our application before we do any of the cloning the request or attaching the header. And we can use, so let's say our authentication service provides a stream that is a token stream when token's available, it's just gonna emit the value of the token locally. So this is going to, we can ensure that the token's actually present in the application. So we can filter the stream for expected token values, and then we can set the token only once it's available. Now, we might wanna use something like merge map here because this is going to ensure that if there are multiple requests, then none get canceled by a new request that's coming in, so they all end up going through. So if we come back to our to-do list, we learn that we can use interceptors to send the token with API requests, and that leaves us with restricting access to certain routes, and we do this with route guards. Route guards implement three different interfaces. The first one, the most commonly used one, is can activate, and this just prevents un unauthorized users from navigating to a specific route, but the important thing to know about this is the code is still in your bundle. The code's still going to be loaded. So you could technically go to the bundle and access anything that is in that protected route. It's very sort of surface level. Now, can activate child prevents unauthorized users from navigating to all children of a specific parent. And then there's can load, which is a little bit different than the other two in that it prevents lazy loaded modules from downloading in the browser if the user isn't authorized, if we haven't told the guard that uh, routing should be able to proceed. So in our app routing module, we're gonna set up our routes and then we can use the interface name that we want to, the, the name of the interface that we want to apply as a property, and we can pass it an array. And the array can contain multiple guards. Again, like uh, with the previous example, they're gonna run in the order that they're listed. So an example of can activate, if we have an authentication guard, let's say, that checks if the user's logged in or not, it's going to implement the can activate interface, then we are going to have our can activate function and this function returns an observable, a promise, or a boolean. So in our can activate function in the actual code, then we basically want to tell it, we want to return false and say access den is denied based on some condition that we define. In this case, maybe my authentication service just has a method on it called is authenticated and it returns a boolean, so we can just use that to determine if navigation should be allowed to proceed or not. Now we can also take some other action if we don't want them to just sort of not be able to access it, we can do something like navigate them to a login page and make them log in. And then it returns true if navigation should proceed. Now, the, if we wanna use the can load interface though, then we're talking about guarded lazy loading now. And this will asynchronously load sections of our application for authorized users, but it still holds true that the front end's not really the place to feel like anything's truly safe. You don't want to be putting sensitive data in your app bundles sort of regardless. It, that kind of authorization really just belongs on an API. So this is a great layer to have. It can also make your apps more lightweight if you do it this way. Um, but just make sure your API is also checking for the, the proper token and proper authorization. So with our lazy losing, we do get smaller bundle sizes and we do get a little more security than can activate, for example. So in our app routing module, if we're doing can load, that maybe let's say in our application we have an admin page or an admin module that's only for authenticated users who have a specific elevated privilege. So we're going to lazy load the routed module and then we can add the can load route, gu or route guard 
And in this particular case, I'm using something called role guard. And I can pass some route data to this route also. So I can say that the expectation for this is that in order for somebody to access this route, I expect them to have this role of admin. And in this way, I can use that role guard to do uh, guarding for different levels of user, right? I could have, I could use the same guard, but say expected role is editor or something like that if I don't want it to be admin. So my can load role guard is going to look something like this. We're just going to lazy load the module if can load returns true. So we, let's say the auth service has a user has role method. I pass in the role that's expected. It just checks to see if maybe the user's token has the right claim that says they have this privilege and returns a Boolean. So then I can grant or deny access <laughs> appropriately based on that. So if we come back to our to-do list now, we know that we can use route guards and lazy loading to restrict access to certain routes. So we finished our Angular authentication to-do list, and we talked about how RxJS can help us to manage authentication events and also to provide us with some interop with third-party SDKs if you happen to be using an authorization server, for example. We talked about interceptors and how to create asynchronous interceptors, and we talked about the three route guard interfaces. So in addition to the techniques that I shared here, sort of a lightning speed, um, you can find more features of RxJS and Angular that can help you to deal with authentication. And you can find these slides at this link. And I really appreciate you giving me your time today. Also, I have stickers. So thank you.